My name is Clifton Hicks. This is uh, Steve Casey to my left here. We were both uh, privates in C Troop of the 1st Squadron of the 1st U.S. Cavalry Regiment. Uh, we're gonna, Steve here is going to help me out on some of these things. Before I begin, though, I just have a brief statement I'd like to say. For the infantrymen, scouts, and tankers of C Troop, 1st Squadron, 1st United States Cavalry Regiment, there are a few words which can express my admiration. I can merely say that I love them with all of my heart and that I would never have made it home alive without such a worthy and courageous host at my side. These were men who risked everything for a cause which they believed was just and true. They left behind them their families, their friends, and their lives. And in fact, they endured the unendurable. They did this not for greed or jealousy or hatred, but for the sake of love. And for that, they are beyond judgment. And I am no judge, and I have not come here to pass judgment either on my fellow soldiers or the officers who once commanded us in war. I'm simply here today to pass judgment on war itself. Uh, first item, April 2004, free fire zone in the Abu Ghraib neighborhood of Baghdad. During Operation Blackjack, my troop was specifically instructed by our troop commander, a captain, that a particular sector we were moving to recon and force was now considered a free fire zone. I specifically recall him telling us that there were, quote, no friendlies in the area. And then he specifically said, quote, game on, all weapons free. It's important to understand uh, these are not unusual orders. Uh, these are not even unnecessary orders. And, and uh, the nature of war, and this particular war, uh, these, are, these are necessary whenever a situation gets unusually dangerous or confused, which happens quite often, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, upon arrival in the area, we found the streets, uh, you know, besides being littered with wreckage of, uh, you know, vehicles, who knows if it's a civilian vehicle or an enemy vehicle, there's no way to tell, uh, but wreckage of vehicles, uh, there wasn't a single building in this neighborhood that hadn't had a hole shot through it or uh, something explode inside of it. This place was totally destroyed. Uh, the streets were littered with numerous human and animal corpses, uh, not just men, uh, but all manner of humanity. Uh, I personally saw no military gear or weapons of any kind on any of the bodies that I came across. I personally did not fire my weapon on this operation, but I do know that other members of my unit embraced the weapons-free order by firing, for example, <laughs> by firing indiscriminately into occupied civilian vehicles and at civilians themselves, using both personal weapons such as rifles and uh, cruiser vehicle-mounted weapons such as machine guns, uh, coaxial machine guns of various caliber. And uh, Steve, would you want to elaborate a bit on some of that? Again, my name is Stephen Casey. Um, I was deployed with Cliff, obviously, at the same point. Um, we were not One together. Second, Steve. No, no, he's, he's good. He's like that. Well, here, just use my. Um, sounds good. Start from the top again, please. I'm Stephen Casey. Um, I was in the same unit as Cliff. Um, in this one particular event, he's talking about the free fire zone. Um, he was in uh, what we could call the rear for a little bit, um, and I was in a forward platoon uh, doing operations on the streets. Um, and we were all ordered, it was free fire, no friendlies. Um, due to the fact uh, there was a rise in violence as we were trying to leave and go home after our year, um, we were April of 2004. Uh, we were scheduled to go home, but due to a rise in violence, we had to remain and, and we returned to the Operation Blackjack. Um, uh, we went to uh, the city where we were supposed to secure and patrol. Uh, one of the first thing that I noticed is that the uh, several buildings had been bulldozed by American engineering companies. Um, to, and it flattened and piled everything from rubble and vehicles up on the side of the road and set them ablaze. And uh, that's how they cleaned up the area and weeded out the bad guys. Uh, and we were sort of a cleanup crew after that. Um, and we, uh, I witnessed several uh, different occurrences where people took advantage of the, th the free fire order. Um, specifically, um, over 20 different uh, vehicles were disabled. I witnessed um, personal weapons being fired into the radiators and windshields due to the fact that these vehicles were coming 
up the correct side of the road that we were going down the wrong way. Um, our orders at this point in time were to have one vehicle on each side of the highway and ensure there was no one on the highway that, besides us. So with all the hand waving you can really do from a vehicle and those who didn't turn around, uh, unfortunately were um, neutralized one way or another. They did the vehicle, there were shots fired into the windshields, the radiators, um, well over 20 different times I personally witnessed. Um, and there, I, I don't really, uh, I never came to, to be able to justify that. Um, I personally never fired at these uh, and used the, the free fire order. Um, but there was a lot of collateral damage, I, no combatant damage that I can even recall um, at that point in time by the, the people I was with. Um, and actually, um, I don't know, I, I have some pictures of the actual marketplace after it was um, bulldozed to the ground. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get those up or not, but maybe not. Um, however, there is footage, picture evidence of this. Um, I think that's, that's really all I'll say about that. Uh, it was later estimated, later reported to us by our platoon leader. We, me, Steve and I were in separate platoons. He was a scout. I was a tanker. But my platoon leader later reported to me uh, that some whiz kid somewhere had estimated that between seven to eight hundred enemy had been killed on that operation. And uh, as you just heard, and I'll, I'll agree to that, and, and I'll agree to swear to that to the day I die, I didn't see one enemy on that operation, but seven to eight hundred of them got killed. Uh, judging from what I saw on the ground, I'm willing to swear under oath in all honesty that while many enemy combatants were in fact killed, the majority of those so-called KIAs were in fact civilians attempting to flee the battlefield. And in that example, just because they were on the right side of the road and we happened to be on the wrong side of the road, uh, they had to pay for that. Um, I'd like to also briefly say that it's common knowledge among the men of my squadron that the unit which we relieved in the summer of 2003, which was 3-7 Cavalry of the 3rd Infantry Division, had also been given free fire orders when they first entered Baghdad in the spring of that year. Many of the men in 3-7 told stories of massive civilian casualties, and in some cases, direct orders to inflict such casualties. Uh, they claimed, as a matter of fact, that they literally, literally, this is what they said almost to a man, that they had killed everything and everyone who dared to show themselves. That means animals, people, anything. Uh, and this is what happens when a conventional force, such as the U.S. military, attacks a heavily populated urban area. Um, they put us in a situation, you know, we're not bad people. Uh, you know, we, we were there because we thought it was the right thing to do. We were there because we thought we were going to make things better. We were there because we thought these people wanted us to be there. And then you show up and you realize that there's a whole bunch of people there that want to kill you. And guess what? They look just like the folks who don't want to kill you. So are you going to sort them out and figure it out? The only way to ensure your survival is to make sure that you put them in the dirt before they put you in the dirt, to put it bluntly. And I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> 